What's up, end gamers? It's time to draft once again, but this time it's all changed because free agency has finally started. We've already broken down some of the biggest moves, mainly running backs, right? There's like half the NFL is going to have a different running back next year. And so let's see how that's going to affect draft position. We're going to do a 10 team PPR snake draft like usual. So we're going to give you a chance to draft with us right now. If you check in the comments, you'll see the link about to drop and you can join. We draft on Sleeper. It's a mock. It's free. It's quick. It's easy. So let's get it and see exactly how things are going to break down now that there's a lot of change. Uh, so the question while we wait for this to fill up is how much do you think things will change? Do you expect any dramatic rises or, or drops in terms of specific players or just overall? Yeah, I definitely think I, I don't want to say names because <laughs> I don't want to sway people before the draft. But I think we're, I think we're certainly going to see there's, there's a couple of running backs I can think of that I think are going to go way up. Um, I don't know if there's anybody that's really going to go down necessarily. We'll see, I guess. Maybe maybe a wide receiver. We'll see. Can't yeah, remember. and that's, that's funny you say that because it's true. Most everybody, like it doesn't even necessarily matter where they win or what happened like just people just, they just get a bump because they signed somewhere right like <laughs> something happens like they're in the news and so we're going to draft them higher than we did a week ago uh which is interesting because we knew some of those players like they were going to be on a different team and we didn't had no idea what team um and they were being questioned like where where are they going to wind up so like we're full looks like we're ready right we're ready we are full here we go uh All maxi right. madden on the clock I guess we don't have to worry about the number one pick. Christian McCaffrey's still a 49er. He didn't get cut. One of one of the very few running backs did not change. Yeah, one of the one of the very few, yes. Yeah, so we uh have broken down day one, all the major moves. Uh mainly running back. Day two also uh, a couple of receivers. Did change as well today we had some news uh common ridley signing and python just letting everybody know of course hit the like button not pleased not not loving the ridley sign i guess i don't know yeah that, that didn't really i mean that was that was from out of nowhere right? that was pretty much from out of nowhere all right you you stuck yourself Right in the middle of number five. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle ish. I'm number seven today. Let's see. Who you like, what am I missing? Oh, I tried. See, I'm like, who am I missing? <laughs> I tried. CD Lamb. Easy pick. Easy pick. Yeah. And reminder to uh, anybody who's watching, if you happen to see in the bottom left, you'll see the, uh, the player list. Not up to date is this is more like last right. year's ADP. So that's why you still see uh guys like Austin Eckler ranked ahead of Bijan Robinson, who I will take right now. <clears throat> yeah, the the Ridley signing was surprising because every report we heard from every reporter was like the Patriots have made him a great offer, but he he wants to stay in Jacksonville. He's waiting to see what Jacksonville is going to do. And then it's like no one ever even mentioned that the Titans were even like this talking to Calvin Ridley. It was like out of nowhere <laughs> going to the Titans. This is twice now. The Titans are a team nobody thought would do much of anything this offseason. And they went out and paid, you know, a running back these days decent money to get a running back and uh now come out and get ridley again nobody i don't think saw either of those coming even the tennessee beat writers no there's a new new coaching staff this is a new it's not going to be the same titans team we're used to and there we go there's one of the there's one of the running backs rising already well we'll talk about those guys in a second let me get my pick in i think this is good value for aj brown so we've already seen a shift. I, can, I mean, we've had a couple of drafts. Where we had as many running backs taken as receivers through like midway through round two. But uh, we have, well, up until my pick, seven running backs 
taken when we had only six receivers off the board. That's that's a little different. So let's start with Jacobs at the two one. Um, too aggressive. Well, I, I'll say a little too aggressive. I think I would prefer Jonathan Taylor and Kyron Williams over him. Maybe Saquon over him. But I think he's probably going to be like a late, mid to late second rounder now, I think. I mean, not only, you know, is he on the Packers, but they obviously, they released Aaron Jones. He's with the Vikings. And A.J. Dillon, they... It doesn't sound like they're going to sign AJ Dillon back. Like they're going to let him go sign somewhere else. So, who is taking touches from Josh Jacobs in this backfield? Emmanuel Wilson. I mean, I, I know there was reports that they like Emmanuel Wilson, but I don't think he's a threat to Josh Jacobs. I mean, this is this is workhorse Josh Jacobs in a much better offense than he was in last year. So, yeah, I like I said, I think there's a couple of running backs we're going to see have big jumps, and he was definitely one of them. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the one thing I'll say for Jacobs is, you know, he's still going to be used like a workhorse, different situation, but he's going to be the guy get, getting all the touches in the backfield, pretty sure. Yeah. Um, don't know if they'll lean on him as heavily as the Raiders kind of had to lean on him the last couple of years, but still, I think he feels like he should still be on RB1, but I agree. I'm taking Taylor and Barkley over him. What about Barkley? Going to Philly, I don't feel like it's really changed much for him. Right, I know that I know people are gonna like, oh man, the touchdowns, but how he wasn't scoring touchdowns in New York anyways. <laughs> so again, way better offense. He's gonna actually have open running lanes, and it's not like you know, Eagles running backs don't catch any passes. Like this isn't like an offense where like he'll catch enough passes. So yeah, I I. I I don't necessarily feel like it's significantly better for Barkley, but I certainly don't feel like it's worse either. Yeah, and I don't think we'll see his ADP shift much. I mean, right. we haven't really. This is about where he's been going, so I think that's fair. Um, now, I actually want to get back to the first round because uh, we saw Tyree Kill as the number one receiver taken, number two pick, and then Chase and then Jefferson. The fact that Kirk Cousins is definitely not a Viking and Sam Darnold is – I guess the starter. <laughs> Do you think that Jefferson should fall at all? I don't, I still don't think so. I, I gotta believe that they're not going into next season just with Sam Darnold. I mean, maybe, but they still have Nick Mullins. He was great with Nick Mullins last year. I really think Jefferson outside of like, you know, an absolute horrendous quarterback, like a Desmond Ritter, you know, Tim Boyle, guy that doesn't really even belong in the NFL. I, I think Justin Jefferson will be just fine with whoever it is. You know he's going to get a ton of targets. He's going to be open. Sam Darnold, if Justin Jefferson is open all over the field, Sam Darnold can get him the ball enough times. And it's still an offense that doesn't matter who the QB is. They're going to throw, throw, and throw some more. So, Yeah, I, I do think we're going to see him – taken less as the number one receiver though because yep. like just some people are going to see Sam Darnold and be like nope nope but uh and to some extent I, I do get that um yeah. all right well here you go you got two receivers you got Lamb you got man great value on Puka yeah this this uh whoops this uh sleeper ADP gives you some nice values Uh, HN. All right. Yeah, this this is kind of where I feel good about HN. Like middle of third is where I feel comfortable with HN. I know in the last time we did an underdog draft, he went like pick 17. That seems too high for me. But here, middle third, I'll, I'll go with HN as my RB1. Uh, all right. Let's see. Let's see who's on the board for me. Debo. All right. Uh, not a lot changed with this team, but I still feel good about Olave. I'll take him there. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. I feel like Olave 
feel like I'm going to have to talk about Olave a bunch this offseason again, like being very undervalued again. Yeah, and the, the Saints as a whole are just, I mean, it's not a super exciting offense. You know it's probably just going to be Derek Carr again, and they're not doing anything to make a splash in free agency. They're not going to make a big splash in the draft, most likely. Uh, so, yeah, there's going to. I think they're going to be one of those offenses that people kind of forget about, and Olave is probably going to be a good value. Yeah, I mean, I know he was, you know, he started, he was kind of, I know he was up and down last year, like a lot of wide receivers. He wasn't like a week in, week out stud, but he's entering year three. Who who else? Who else is there? Rashid Shahid, A.T. Perry. I'm thankful we don't have to talk about Michael Thomas anymore that now that he's been released. That's right. <laughs> like, like, who is really, you know, taking targets away from him? So, yeah. Exactly. So the ATN, uh, other John going with ATN. You so you got ATN over ATN. That's so actually the one thing I was a little surprised at. Yeah, it's it's close between them. I I still have worries with. I'm not so worried about ATN. You know, with Doug Peterson saying like they want to get um like Tank Dell more involved or whatever. I'm not too worried about. Or I mean, uh, Tank Bigsby. I'm not really too worried about that, but we saw last year, you know, he's fine. He's good, but I, I just would rather have the upside of an a chan like a guy who can, you know, single-handedly win me weeks. There you go. Clayton said he's a little worried about him staying healthy. I um, mean, you could say yeah, I mean, that's all we... he did have injuries last year. That's for sure. I mean, and that's certainly something you have to worry about with him because he is a smaller running back. But again, I, I'm I'm willing to shoot on the on the upside, that weekly upside. Yeah, I've been I've been taking HN in the third, so I'm there with you. Uh, biggest question here: Jacobs in the second. Now go back to other John. He said he was shocked, <laughs> shocked at Jacobs in and Jones out. Even a Packer fan did not see that coming. Guess he's in. He yeah. sold on him. I think that shock that was that and the Ridley one was probably the well. There's quite a few shocking signings at first. Yeah, I don't think anybody expected DeAndre Swift to the Bears. Um, but yeah, certainly Jacobs. Jacobs in Aaron Jones out was shocking. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know that he'll go two point one in most drafts. Again, this is a ten teamer, but. Again, he, he probably will be among the league leaders in touches, I think, by year's end, if he stays healthy. Yeah, like we said earlier, I think 2.1 feels a little early. I mean, other John is a Packers fan, so he got his guy. <laughs> but um, I think mid to late second feels feels good. All right, and Python, I guess I didn't know this. See a Tennessee fan? Um don't understand those signings either. No, I, those both surprised me. Do you think they should be favored to win that division now because of that? Is that enough? Who's Who else is in that division? Well, Colts and Jags. Colts, Jags. And Houston, right? Yeah, I think Houston, Houston's got to be the favorite still, for sure. That's a tough division. That's a tough division. But I think it's obvious what what... Brian Callahan, what his, what his, like, what he wants this offense, what he wants this identity to be. He wants, we've talked about it a few times. The days of Mike Ray roll, you know, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball some more. It's gone. This is going to be a high volume passing attack. It, Tony Pollard, a, you know, a good pass catching running back, good out in space. Ty J Spears, a good pass catching running back, good out in space. You got, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks now. You got Chigo Conco. This is a team that's going to – this is – like, don't think of the Titans the way you used to think of them. This is – like, it may not work out. Will Levis may not be the answer, and maybe they maybe they go out and get a QB in the draft. Who knows? But they're going to throw the ball a lot more than people think or, or expect because when you think of the Titans, it, it's, it's obvious what they want to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Completely different offense. Uh, I will say, besides just being shocked at those signings, it does uh, it throws a lot of cold water, big bucket on my Jigaconquo sleeper 
uh, pick and also Ty J Spears. All right. Uh... That's great value in Rashad White. I'm surprised he's still out there with those guys taken before him. I think I'll chalk that up partly to him being kind of buried in the rankings a little bit. Yeah, some of these guys are buried. I mean, there's definitely guys that are buried, so you gotta you gotta do some digging. Or you gotta kind of know like well. Interflux again, a fan I of like your team. you. Inter Interflux, you're my favorite. <laughs> you're my favorite. Yeah, getting Puka there was it's pretty nice. I mean, look, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I'm just um, I'm a draft genius for getting Puka there. It's because the sleeper ADP is terrible, and he's, like, listed at pick, like, 200. So if you don't think, if you're not, like, you know, if you just showed up today and you're like, oh, hey, a fantasy football draft, I'll go check it out, and I'll just try it out and see what happens, you're probably not thinking about Puka Nakua, right? <laughs> You don't see you don't see him on you don't see him on the thing. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, yeah, like I mean, yeah, I get it. Like when when the sleeper ADP updates, I'm not gonna get C V Lamb a Puka Nakua for the for the five, that's for sure. <laughs> so maybe I do think it partly, like I said, uh kind of as we predicted a result, you know, all those free agent moves, some of those guys went got a little bump, right? Jacobs went a little higher, uh, Barkley being gone. I, mean, I guess I could have taken Puka instead of AJ Brown. I, I've been taking Puka and DJ Moore, you know that. And so I'm I decided to switch it up a little bit when AJ B. Yeah, now I will say that if if I didn't go Rashad White there at the five five, I was gonna probably go Andrews. If I didn't go run if I didn't go running back there, I probably would have gone Andrews. That would have been my pick. All right, Pacheco, good value. Yeah, I feel like White, Cook, Pacheco, they're kind of like all lumped together. Okay. Oh, another riser. Yeah, well, what do you think about Swift with the Bears? That's another one. Didn't I mean I know the Bears have a lot of money, but didn't think they'd be looking for a new running back necessarily first. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. If 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 we could like clearly say, okay, he's gonna be the guy, then I would feel great about Swift. But the Khalil Herbert is still there. Rashawn Johnson is still there. I worry that it's gonna be a committee, so Um, talking about Ayuk and Debo. Ayuk, I mean, yeah, Ayuk's not going anywhere, is he? Ayuk, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, don't I mean, think technically, he's still under contract, right? He still has one more year on his deal. Yeah, he's not a free agent. Uh, do I do it here? I don't know. I, I can't. I just can't do it. I can't do it. What? Quarterback? I can't. I can't. I can't say. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, obviously they went out and got the under Swift. He's he's definitely the starter. Rashawn Johnson will just be like a complimentary back. I don't think Johnson was bad at all last year. Just no. They, I think Johnson's get a, a good running here. back. No. But again, the the worry here isn't. The worry here, it, it's not always about who's who's the better running back. Unless it's like, unless we're talking about like where one guy is just head and shoulders, but like, you know, Josh Jacobs versus Emmanuel Wilson or something like that. It's about, you know, why does a team that already has two capable running backs go out and pay, you know, money for another running back? And, and do we does Swift get enough volume, you know, 
to, to pay off the ADP. I certainly, I mean, he could, he could, but man. Yeah, it's, it's about fit, right? Does he really fit there? Right. We'll find out. There's Ridley. Ridley There's at the Ridley. seven. Hmm. Ridley the Titan. I'm going to have to wrap my head around that. I know. I know. It's going to be hard to be like, oh, it's the Titans. Like, it's terrible. It's where wide receivers go to die. And it's true. But, man. And look, he might be terrible this year because Will Levis might not be good, <laughs> right? Will Levis might not be good. <laughs> but I really feel like we don't know yet because, again, what we saw with Levis, not just that, you know, he didn't even have a full year as a starter, but besides that, is that offense, like you said, they didn't even let him really throw. And sometimes when he did have to let it loose, like that game where they decided to come back from like two touchdowns and beat the Dolphins and – uh you know, sometimes when they were just actually in pass first mode, he looked good. I'm telling you, I was never really on Levis before, uh, you know, through the pre-draft process and even, you know, getting into last year. But what I saw, I was actually, I'm actually a little bit in on him now that I've seen him play more in the NFL at that level. I think he's a lot more capable than we realize now that he's got weapons. I think this Tennessee offense is actually going to be still surprisingly good. They're like, oh, well, now they have Paul and they have Ridley. But I don't think people are really going to expect a lot out of them yet because of Levis. Okay. It's hmm. I'm just gonna go and take the value here at running back. Still feel like it's a value. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Jones, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, so thoughts on that. Now obviously we broke this down in the videos. Uh you know, you'll check that out. We'll talk about the major moves day one and day two. Um, so you can get our full thoughts if you check that out. But quick thoughts on the Aaron Jones thing. I kind of feel, I guess, the same way I did about him in Green Bay. Like, he'll, he'll probably be fine. He'll probably have some games where he does great. And people are like, there we go. And he'll have some games where he's horrible. He'll probably miss some games with injury. <laughs> like, he'll be Aaron Jones. I think that's it. I feel like when he's healthy, he's still a stud, right? We saw at the end of last year, he broke off, what was it, two or three straight monster games. Um, but that was coming off of injury. That's it's When he plays, he's still very good. I feel like with that offense now, and if it's either Darnold or rookie at quarterback, they're going to lean on him a lot. They're going to pass it to him a lot. He's going to get a lot of dump offs. So I feel pretty confident in that sense. I, I don't expect him to play, you know, a full season. But as long as you know that going in and I have him as my third running back, I feel like it's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Got to go receiver here. I mean, I don't have to, but I'm going to. I was going to take him if you fell. The guy kind of get overlooked. It's funny how, you know, post trauma like rookie fever. Rookie fever has now been replaced by free agent fever. <laughs> we're, yes. we're not taking the rookies, and they're those, their guys are dropping because everyone's taking these free agents now instead. Although, don't worry, in a month or less than a month, like in less than a month or maybe a month. When the NFL draft comes along, it'll be rookie fever again. <laughs> big, big time. Yeah. All right, well, what do you think about this? Arthur Swanson saying that Aaron Jones gets outsnapped by Ty Chandler. Well, he might because Ty Chandler might actually play more snaps and be be healthier than uh, than um, Aaron Jones. So it, it's it's possible. Well, All right. I feel like this is too good of a value not to take in here. I'll just say I think uh, – like if they thought Ty Chandler was the guy, they wouldn't have gone out and gotten Aaron Jones yeah. and paid him what they paid him, right? 
Uh, this isn't AJ Dillon. They're getting like on a discount. This is Aaron Jones, and they, you know, again paid him a what for these days for a running back is a decent amount. So I feel like if Aaron Jones is healthy enough, he definitely on snaps Chandler. But like you said, just by default, he might not. All right. So you took the dip, uh, Aaron, Anthony Richardson. Apparently, he's got a new backup. I don't know if you saw this. I did not see it, but I see it in the chat. Joe Flacco. Okay, well, at least we Flacco. can feel pretty good. About hey, you know what though? That's actually really good for this for the Colts receivers because we know now if if Anthony Richardson gets hurt, it's fine. It's Joe Flacco. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, definitely feeling good about about those guys. I don't know if Richardson's gonna have Flacco breathing down his neck, but no. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's gonna have. I don't think he has to worry about losing his job to Joe Flacco or anything. But no. Like I said, at least um, if something happens to to Richardson, it's not like oh man, they're gonna be catching passes from you know I don't know whoever somebody terrible. At least we know Joe Flacco will. Yeah. All right. And then the Flacco with the Flacco take saying he should be starting. I mean, obviously he he definitely could be. I mean, look how good he was last year. I don't know if the, any team was going to make him the starter, though. Like what, what team is out there looking for a quarterback that doesn't have a high draft pick uh, that is willing to, to make Joe Flacco the starter? Like I, it's a little, a little too risky. Ah. Very nice pick there. Now, Benson feels like he's about to be a cowboy after the draft. <laughs> that would be fantastic. If Benson is a cowboy, he's he's suddenly in firmly in the top 10 of rookie picks. Easily. Oh. Easily. I know people are already saying no running back is going to be in the first round. No, Trey Benson, if he goes to the Cowboys, is, he might even be higher depending on where some of the receivers go, honestly. We're talking about a... a Running back that does ever can do everything in the Cowboys offense, yeah, yeah. I mean, you never know, but it feels like the Cowboys are destined to get it. now. Jonathan Brooks would also make sense, he's you know, most teams probably will see him as the number one running back in this class, and of course, went to UT. Um, but you never know, you never know who Jerry has his eye on. The only issue with Jonathan Brooks, if you're if you're a team drafting Jonathan Brooks, is you have to accept that he may, yeah, may not he, be ready. I mean, he may be like able to play week one, but right. I mean, he's coming off an of ACL tear. When did he tear his ACL? November. Uh, something like exactly. that. Exactly. Oh shoot! I just realized I'm on the clock. Yeah, November 12th. So middle of November. So I'm glad I caught that. Did not even realize I had 10 seconds left. <laughs> I like Jonathan Brooks, and I think if he was healthy, he would easily be the number one running back in this class, but I wonder how much. Yeah, and again, I heard his draft stock. Jerry Jones says they're all in. I'm not sure what what that means because they're the only team who has not signed a player um, who wasn't on their team last year. So I'm not sure what all in means for him, but we'll see, I guess. Zach Moss, another riser for sure. Okay. Now I do realize I'm on the clock again. Let's see. So I'll take the value again. Marquise Brown still not <laughs> signed with anyone. So we'll see what happens there. Everybody behind me has a tight end. So let's get another running back. Let's get the Miami backfield locked up. Not a bad idea. 
It's interesting. There's Bowers again. I feel like every time someone takes Bowers, they're taking a second tight end also. Weird. Why? Yeah, like if you feel like he's good enough to draft in a redraft league that's this shallow, then, you know, why take another tight end and vice versa? Jaden Daniels off the board. Interesting. Yeah, I'm still interesting. I'm still waiting on QB. Like I've just, I just know, especially that we're doing 10 teamers. Like I know there's absolutely no reason I can't take a QB in the last round and still be satisfied. <laughs> that is true. I just saw Anthony Richardson in round eight and was like, okay, I'm pulling the trigger. Yeah, no, that's a great upside pick, but I'm, uh, doing that let's see uh, okay what do we think a couple of Steelers questions Flacco scared of the Steelers without Deontay I think he should be more scared of them with Arthur Smith I think that's the issue yeah oh man <laughs> and Russ Russ is there now by the way like and Russ and Russ like do we feel better about George Pickens now that Russ is there and, and Deontay is gone Yep, that's exactly what Chase is asking. How do we feel about Pickens? You know what? I thought about this. Um, I mean, it, I know a different situation, obviously. But think about last year, Corland Sutton, right? He was the number one receiver there. And he was, you know, very similar, bigger, you know, frame, bigger, bigger guy who was getting those downfield shots. I um, mean, Pickens is, is faster. But uh, he scored 10 touchdowns, and he didn't have huge yardage just because they didn't throw the ball a whole lot. But he had some productive weeks. Like, Why can't Pickens do at least that, if not better, right? I feel like Pickens can can do that kind of – I mean, Russ, at the very least, can still throw the deep ball. Now, but then there's the question, is is he going to be allowed to throw the deep ball because of Arthur Smith? <laughs> that, yeah, that's the question. And So it's I, like I, I – Pickens is a guy that I really probably won't want in redraft because I don't want the headache of like, because look, Corlin Sutton was good last year, but it's, like you said, he was scoring a touchdown almost every single week, right? He was, it was like every week somehow Corlin Sutton would find the end zone. If Corlin Sutton had only scored like four touchdowns last year, he would not have been very good. So I do have my worries. Pickens, but I think in like a in a best ball format, I'd be okay with it. With him, but man, in like a yeah. in a redraft league where I got to decide if I'm am I putting him in my lineup or not? Like, ah, oh, no thanks. I just don't want to deal with that hassle. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be kind of like last year. He's gonna be pretty frustrating, really up and down. And you got to think now, like. They're not really going to roll into the season with George Pickens as their only wide receiver, right? Like George Pickens and Calvin Austin, those are their wide receivers. They're like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> this is, we're good. Yeah, probably not. Like they're going to, you got to think they're going to draft a wide receiver, right? All right. And then, uh, are we should we feel sad for Deontay Johnson? I mean, I, I think he wanted out, didn't he? Went out of Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah, I don't know if I feel sad for Deontay Johnson. It's not like he's going from this great situation to I think what I feel sad about is I saw that report. I don't know if it's true or not, that the Steelers were engaging in talks with the Chiefs to trade Deontay Johnson to the Chiefs. But then they're like, Yeah, we don't think we really want to. They decided like we don't really want to give you Deontay Johnson, which I get it. Like you don't really want to give, you know, your, the, the best team in football, a, one of, a great wide receiver. That's what makes me sad. It's like, man, we could have had Deontay Johnson on the Chiefs. He would have smashed on the Chiefs. But, man. yeah, I think he'll still be okay in Carolina just, just from sheer volume. Just from sheer volume. I, I think if you're Deontay Johnson, I mean, first of all, what I understood is I think he wanted out – but also, I think he's going to get what he wanted. He's going to get to be the guy, right? The number one target. He wanted more attention, more target. And I think he's going to get the higher target share because he's going to be the focal point there, the clear number one receiver. And he's probably glad to be, you know, out of that 
system where they didn't know who the quarterback was going to be. And now, of course, Arthur Smith there again. It's, I, and look, I haven't been to Pittsburgh, but if I had to choose between Charlotte and Pittsburgh, I'd choose Charlotte. I like it. Uh, Carolina's maybe not going to be a playoff team this year, but I think Deontay Johnson himself is in a better situation. I mean, are the Steelers going to be a playoff team? And if they are, it's going to be like last year, right? Where it's like, yeah, you made the playoffs, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think it's a massive downgrade. Um, wow, that would be a, a fit. <laughs> Hunter Renfro. Well, Hunter Renfro I, still I am on a team so team. here for everybody talking themselves back into Hunter Renfro. I'm so here, like... I remember when Hunter Renfro had like that stretch with the Raiders and people were like, he's good. He's good. I'm like, no, he's not good. He's not. He's just getting like slammed with targets. But if he goes, if he goes to the Chiefs, people will be like, ah, oh, Hunter Renfro Chiefs. Anybody, anybody who's a chief will immediately get attention. Yes. Uh, okay, fair question. So, do you think Tennessee going after and getting Calvin Ridley does that mean that they're kind of giving up on Traylon Burks? Um, I don't think it means they're giving up on him, but. I think it just means more like, remember again, new coach. He didn't draft Traylon Burks. He's never seen Traylon Burks. I think it's just getting, 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 getting his guys. So yeah, this... man, there are still some really good tight ends on the board. Who do I like the most? I think I like a little bit more. Yeah. There's some Really good tight ends who aren't even getting drafted. Yeah, you know, I think I can say this because I doubt anybody else here needs a tight end, but it doesn't really matter. Dallas Goddard not getting drafted in a 10-teamer. Njoku after last year. Schultz back in Houston not getting drafted. It's a little surprising. Yeah, I had my pick between Njoku, Ferguson, Schultz, Goddard. And also to answer Skyward's question, I don't think Traylon Burks is being used properly. He he pretty much played mostly out of the slot in college, and they've been forcing him on the outside in the pros, and I don't think that's what he's best at. So maybe now with Ridley and D, and D Hop there, maybe now he'll get to play more in the slot. We'll see. But anyways. All right, well, there's the board because we're done with this quick uh, with 13-rounder, 10-team. So let's break down each squad and see what happened and big changes from a week ago. Team one, Mixy Madden, I went at CMC. No surprise. We see Nico again at the turn. We've seen it almost every time, right? I feel like Nico's always there yep. at, the, at the the 210 that turn. And with Devontae Adams, Rasheed Rice, Trey McBride, Metcalf, Ridley, Samir White, Devin Singletary, Love, Spears, Leggett, and Estime. Yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good, solid draft. I don't really, there's not really any pick that I look at and think like, oh, that was a reach or I don't like that pick. So, I mean, Adams isn't my favorite guy there. I definitely think there's guys I like more than him, but it's fine at the three one. So th this should be a, this is a fine team, fine team. Yep, very solid. Agree, Carter and team two got Ty Hill, Kyron Williams who. I think he's one of those guys who actually fell a little bit because of those other running backs getting taken earlier after free agency. Uh, Josh Allen, Keenan Allen, Kelsey, Kamara, Cooper, Eckler, DeAndre Hopkins, Ladd McConkey, Dak Prescott, Corbin Sutton, and Nick Chubb, who I have to admit, if he was still there, I would have had to take him for the first time. I could not let Nick Chubb go undrafted, but he, he was taken there. Yeah, I, I can't argue with Nick Chubb in the in the last round. That's that's pretty good. This is an interesting team. I mean, I really like the first three picks a lot, and then it got really old really fast. 
but but I still think he made some good picks there. So uh, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's okay. I feel like after those first few picks, it kind of like eh, just okay after that. Yeah, first five very solid. The end got some good values, but the middle is very like you said. Well, well, veteran Eckler, okay, fine as your third running back, but only if you had a better RB two. Kamara is the RB two, eh. and then DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, what is what is Hopkins' value now that Calvin Ridley is there? Is he draftable? Oh yeah, I think he's I think he's draftable, but you gotta like yeah now like last year he was living off of of getting all the targets. That's not going to be the case this year. So, I mean, he wasn't even that great last year. <laughs> so. I don't know. All right. Team three, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Mahomes, Najee and Kenneth Walker, Kittle, Dunze, Javante Lockett, Jaden Daniels, and then Blake Corum, A.D. Mitchell, and then Cole Komet. And I will say, like, Devonta Smith very very early, but I think that was an auto pick. But I, I, the pick that shocked me, maybe the most shocking pick of the entire draft, was Najee Harris in the fourth. That was that was pretty surprising, um, but I like I like got some good value after that. Like Odunze in the seventh, that's really good. I don't understand, you know, Jaden Daniels when you have Mahomes, but it's fine. But really, the the pick that me that stands out, other than Devonta Smith, which was an auto pick, is Najee Harris in the fourth. Yeah, that that's a little. Early. I mean, I think we'll get maybe what we got last year from Najee Harris, which is. Fine, but he's really not an RB one, and you probably could have got him a couple of rounds later. Um, right. But yeah, some good late values. Okay, and then there's Clayton who decided to go. I guess we can call this zero RB. Five straight receivers, some familiar names there: Connor and Pollard as the RBs with Brooks, Jalen Warren, and Marshawn Lloyd. Pitts is the tight end, and Herbert in the last round at quarterback. You like this build? Yeah, it's okay. Um, I mean, I certainly like Connor. I think Pollard will be okay in Tennessee. Brooks could pay off. I think Deontay was great value. I certainly like the first five wide receivers, and I like Pitts. So definitely this team, you know, if, if those running backs hit, got a ton of upside for sure. All right. There was something, if you were doing like a, you know, zero RB like this and you got those first receivers, would you have gone different direction at running back? Or was Connor, do you feel like it was the best one on the board? I mean, I think Connor there is probably the best one on the board. I mean, I don't really know what I would have done differently. I mean, you probably don't need Deontay Johnson there, but also I get the value was good for him. So I get it. Um, Yeah, no, I think it's fine. Yeah, I do think though, I, I, like you're hitting at instead of even Pollard the round before, or especially the next round instead of Deontay, I think taking a running back like Benson, who has that upside, I think I would have liked it a little bit better. Um, yeah. But uh, it's good. Very solid core. And then you went with CeeDee Lamb and Puka in the first two rounds. It seems like a steal, both those picks. And then HN, Mike Evans, and Rashad White, back-to-back -back bucks, because you're clearly inspired by Baker Mayfield re-signing. Yes. <laughs> uh, Terry McLaurin, Christian Kirk, Anthony Richardson. You got Benson, Mostert, Shakir, Kendry Miller, and Jake Ferguson. So a lot of your guys, you, I know you're going back to because just they're good values. Mike Evans, you know, as a fourth rounder, seems pretty solid. Rashad White, I feel like that's crazy late for him. Because um, that Tampa offense, let's face it, if it's just like last year, those guys are both going to be really good again. Exactly. Like, I... Like Rashad White, I can kind of understand, but I don't understand why Mike Evans is going in the fourth round. Like he was great. Baker Mayfield's back. And I know the Bucks said, like, oh, we wanna we wanna bring in some help for you know to take the pressure off Rashad White. Well, all they've done so far is re-sign Chase Edmonds. So I don't know, I don't know what their plan is. Cause this isn't like the most stacked running back class here. So I still feel good about Rashad White being a volume, you know volume-based running back. Maybe he won't be as good as he was last year, but I think he'll, just based on volume, he'll be fine. Yeah, White's one of those guys you feel like came out ahead after free agency because they didn't do anything. Like they, There is no challenger to him. There's no rookie running back I'm really that worried about. I seriously doubt the Bucks are taking in a running back early in the draft. So, yeah, very solid. You've got five 
receivers who are very capable of starting every given week. Um, so a lot of it comes down to A-Chan and Benson. You took chances at running back, but that's what it's about, right? Chasing the upside. And then we have Chris Z49 right after you. Brees Hall, DJ Moore, Debo Samuel, Henry Cook, Mixon. We didn't talk about Mixon really today. Kincaid, uh, JSN, Burrow, Bowers, Demario Douglas, and Jacoby Myers. Yeah, I mean, good team, got some good values. Like, I feel like that's pretty good value on DJ Moore, Debo Samuel. Derrick Henry, no longer a, a insane value, but I still think in the fourth round, like, that's probably pretty good for Derrick Henry. Probably going to end up being pretty good. So, I mean, yeah, and then other, we talked about it a little bit. Other than taking Bowers when you already have Kincaid, I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see, but I wouldn't personally do it. But, I mean, overall, this is a fine team. Nothing to really complain about here. No, my only thing is I'd rather have a stronger wide receiver three than RB3 or RB4. Had four receivers. I mean, yeah. four running backs before a third receiver. Uh, but still, I think that's it's fine. I think the values are pretty good. If Jason breaks out, then you're good. I went with Bijan, A.J. Brown, Chris Olave, Michael Pittman, Andrews, Ramondre, Aaron Jones, Jaden Reed, Xavier Worthy, Hollywood, Chase Brown, and Kyler Murray. Nice. Yeah, this is a this is a very good team. I mean, Bijan and then those three wide receivers. Like I said, when I took Rashad White, if I hadn't gone running back there, I would have gone Andrews. You got Stevenson and Aaron Jones should be fine as the RB2s. You got good upside on the bench. I like this is a very, very good team. All right. Got the stamp of approval. I'll take it and run with it. Uh, let's go to the Hidden Truths in the eighth spot. Got Sun God and Barkley, Flowers and Tank, Pacheco, Swift, Lamar, Hawkinson, Josh Downs, Chuba, Brian Thomas, and then Braylon Allen. Oh, wait. And Mike Williams, the last pick. Mike Williams looks like a great value, except for the fact that he was just released by the Chargers. But it could still wind up good for him somehow. Right. My, my big worry from Mike Williams is coming off ACL tear. And yeah, now we don't know where he's playing. This is a team that probably should have drafted Brock Bowers because, again, TJ Hawkinson, really doubt we're going to see TJ Hawkinson. I mean, definitely not going to see him to start the season, and then he's probably going to be slow played back into action. You're going to need another tight end. This is a team I would have liked to see him take Brock Bowers. Um, but overall, I mean, St. Brown, Zay Flowers, Tank Dell. It feels a little early for Zay Flowers there, but... I don't, I don't, I like them. I like your running backs. You got great value on Lamar. I like what you did at the end of your draft. So really, I would just say, yeah, if you're going to draft TJ Hawkinson, I would definitely be backing him up with another tight end. Yeah. And that Mike Williams pick now, again, this doesn't matter because if this were a real league and we only did 13 rounds, you could just cut Mike Williams and pick up a tight end because Dallas Goddard is still out there. And right. you know, all the tight ends we mentioned are just <laughs> undrafted Dalton Schultz. But, uh, so I'm not going to worry that's about He's going to move Mike Williams to IR and just grab Dallas Goddard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I uh, got three good running backs, um, top three receivers, ton of upside. So yeah, it was a solid team. And then team nine got Jameer Gibbs and JT went double running back. I think that was the only team to go double running back. Start yeah. out, got Waddle, Laporta, Watson, Cup, Godwin, Addison, Brian Robinson, Stroud, Lake, Cooks, Charbonnet, and Ford. You can tell this is a team that definitely looked through through the list, got some good values of guys like Cup, Late, got Stroud. Um, but what do you think? Yeah, if you're going to go double RB, this is what you got to do. You got to just attack wide receivers in the middle part of the draft and he did like you said got good value on cup watson feels a little early to me there um but got otherwise got good values got a great value on stroud so yeah i like i like this build yeah that's a good look at watson is the only one i'm like yeah feels early but hey you got cup after him godwin definitely startable so very solid. And then you got Laporta as TE1. And then the other John, we know, took his Packer and Jacobs with Etienne. Etienne, I guess, kind of late. Surprise is the end of the third round. You think that's, I mean, I, I imagine he's going to go earlier than that in most drafts. Yeah, because he's a running back. And, and because, like, after him, who do you really, like, maybe, 
Well, I mean, there's still guys like Henry. See, this is my this is my thing with Etienne. It's like, is Etienne going to be that much better than guys like Rashad White, James Cook, Isaiah Pacheco this year? I don't know. So that's why that's why I just have trouble pulling the trigger on Etienne because it's like, well, I can just wait a round or two and get those guys and probably get similar production. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Like, I'm not off of Etienne, but I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, I'm fine taking Rashad White over him if he's a full round later, uh, which you did. But All right, and then Diggs, another interesting name there. Hurts, Higgins, Pickens, Monty, Ingram, Zach Moss, Romeo Dobbs, Dotson, and my guy, I think the first time I decided not to take. You took Bucky Gore, Irving right? over Frank Gore. To other John, you win this draft. No, but uh, what do you think <laughs> of this team? No, I think it's a good team. Definitely a good team. Higgins in the sixth round. That's, I mean, are we, are people worried he's going to like actually get traded? Like he's going to hold out? <laughs> like, I, I don't, I think that's good value. Um, so yeah, I think this, this is a good team. Good draft here. Yep. Very solid core there. Even if Diggs does take a step back, I don't think he's just going to completely fall off and turn to dust. Um, he's still serviceable. So yeah, it's very solid. All right, there you go. We'll do it again, and we'll see what else free agency brings. You know, there's going to be some more shakeups just in the coming days. And, of course, we're still doing underdog drafts. Best ball for you. If you don't know, make sure you check it out. Uh, use promo code ENDGAME. If you do sign up for underdog for the first time, you get 100% deposit match, still up to $100. And best ball media coming out, I'm sure, any second now, right? Any day now, probably. Yeah, where is it? Where's Best Ball Mania, underdog? Let's go. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready to start drafting, drafting for real. Um, but if you do decide to uh, to check out underdog, again, make sure you use that promo code. It'll help us out. It also helps you out. But we'll be back. Hit notifications so you know the next time we'll do a live draft. And uh, we'll see you then.